Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Huck. Today I am doing my last book haul of the year, of the decade. Uh, so these are going to be all of the books that I got in November and December. So let's start with some of the books that I feel like pretty much everyone's been hauling around this time of year because they came out in November. First of all, I have Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the first book in her Dreamer trilogy, which is a spin-off from the Raven cycle. Um, and this is specifically following Ronan Lynch and his brothers Declan and Matthew. So it's following the Lynch brothers um, and kind of their lives after the events of the Raven cycle and the Raven cycle is one of my favorite series. Maggie Stiefvater is one of my favorite authors so of course I had to get her new book and I've already read this one um, and I read it in November so it was in my November wrap-up which I will link below if you want to know what I thought of this. And then the next book that I have I actually accidentally have two editions of um, which is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern so this is the US edition and the UK edition. I know that a lot of people have actually purposefully bought both the US and UK edition. I did not. This was an accident. Um, what happened is that I ordered, I pre-ordered the UK edition because I like this cover better. I like the color and the big B on it. I feel like this one's a little bit boring looking. Anyways, I pre-ordered this one um, from Book Depository because it's the UK edition so I had to get it from Book Depository. And then I forgot that I did that because I pre-ordered it like months before it came out and then also Book Depository like since it's coming from the UK it just like it takes a long time to get here so I forgot that I pre-ordered this and then I saw this in person in a bookstore and bought it um, and then like a week or so later this one came in the mail but I decided that I'm going to hang on to both of them hopefully I like the book otherwise it's gonna be awkward um, but they're both really pretty so I want to show you that this one the cover I don't like quite as much it's a little bit boring but the inside is really nice so it has these end papers with keys you've probably seen all of this because people everybody's been hauling this book but under the dust jacket is just so beautiful um, so I really wanted to keep this one I also got this one from um, like a little local indie bookstore uh, that's near where I work so there's this little indie bookstore near my job and so on my lunch break sometimes I'll stop in there and yeah so I saw this one there and it's like a signed edition and the naked hardback was so pretty so I decided to pick it up and support an indie bookstore um, and then this one I just like the dust jacket a lot more on this one. Um, it also has really cool end papers that have like this library with this guy running. Although under the dust jacket it's kind of boring. It doesn't have anything fancy under there. Oh, and of course this one also has the little images down the side here, which is so pretty. Anyways, so for right now I'm keeping both of these and really hoping that I like this book. Um, but you know, this has been all over booktube, so I'm sure everyone's heard descriptions of these, but it follows this boy, Zachary, who is a grad student, um, and he finds a book that mysteriously has a story in it that is like a moment from his life, and he doesn't know how this book has this story in it, and so he kind of tries to track it down, and it leads him to this like secret, six, secret society and an underground library. So... That just sounded really great and it's a book about books so I was really excited about this and I've been wanting to read something by Erin Morgenstern for a long time um, because I just hear really great things about her but her only other book is The Night Circus and I don't like circuses as a setting in books so I've never wanted to read The Night Circus but then I heard that she's coming out with a book about books and I was like this is my moment I love books about books and I've been wanting to read Erin Morgenstern so next I have a couple of books that I bought all together because I kind of was in the mood for something very specific so in October I was feeling kind of slumpy with my reading I just wasn't excited about what I was reading and I felt like it was because I wasn't like picking the right books to read um, so I was trying to figure out like what is it that I'm really in the mood to read what is something that's kind of like in my comfort zone that's gonna get me like really excited about a book and so there were two things that I was really in the mood for that hopefully a lot of times they overlap but not always one of them is of course like naturey foresty settings um, and like and or nature magic which is something that I've talked about in other videos um, and then of course the other thing I was 
kind of in the mood for was historical fiction but especially like Celtic historical fiction and I feel like those two things a lot of times do overlap or like historical fiction or historical fantasy um, but I feel like a lot of times those things kind of overlap so I got a couple of books that kind of fall into either of those categories or maybe both so the first one that I have is The Highland Witch by Susan Fletcher. This is historical fiction set in the Scottish Highlands in 1692 following a famous massacre that happened there. Um, in this we're following a character named Korag who has been accused of witchcraft. She is one of the only survivors from this massacre and she's been accused of witchcraft and is now in prison awaiting her death. Um, then there is an Irish reverend who is a Jacobite and he is trying to find out more about what happened um, at this massacre because he believes it will help his Jacobite cause and he finds out that Korag is the only survivor so he wants to interview her. She says that she'll help him but in exchange he has to first listen to her whole life story so that when she is dead somebody will remember her and somebody will know her story. And so that's what this is, is this is her telling her life story, kind of everything leading up to that massacre. And I've already read this and I have a review for it that I will link below as well if you want to know my thoughts on it, but this was one that I picked because it definitely fell into the categories I was looking for. It is Celtic historical fiction because it is set in Scotland in the 1600s and it does have really great like nature atmosphere to it. It doesn't have like magic in it, but it is but there is a really good like nature natural atmosphere to it that I really liked. Next I have The Game of Kings by Dorothy Dunnett. Um and so this is the first book in the Lamond Lamond Chronicles. I have to look up how to say that word. Um so this is historical fantasy and it is also set in Scotland in 1574. So this is following our main character Francis and he has been exiled I think from Scotland but he wants to clear his name um, and protect his family and so it is following him as he's trying to do that. I don't really know that much else about the story of this but I kind of want to go into it not knowing a whole lot because as I said this is the beginning of a series I think it's like a six book series um so I'm really interested to see like kind of what are the twists and turns so this is one that I had never heard about before but apparently it has pretty good ratings and this is also something that I was thinking about recently is that I wanted to read more backlist books and that can mean backlist in that like you know there may be five years old or something, or backlist meaning they're much older than that. This I think was originally published in the 60s, um, so this is a little bit older, um, but I'm really interested to see, you know, what do I think of historical fantasy from the 60s and what was that like? Is it different from other historical fiction or historical fantasy or just high fantasy that I have read recently? Um, but something else that's really nice about reading backlist books is that if I can find an author or a series that I love then I have all of these other books that I can read. I don't have to wait like year to year for them to be published and that was something that I really was like looking for. Um, so of course this whole series is out because it was published in the 60s. Uh, so if I like this I can just read the entire series um, and I have a couple of other authors that I recently got books from that they also have like a lot of books so if I like that author there's so many books that I can choose from. Anyway so this one I know will fulfill that it is Celtic historical fiction. Um, I don't know if it has any like nature vibes to it but it at least checks one of the boxes. Next up I have Lady of the Forest by Gem Jennifer Robertson um, and this is a Robin Hood retelling. This is another like backlist book. I don't really know when was this originally published? Let's find out. 92. So this was published in the 90s. Um, and for one thing, I love this cover art. This is very much, I feel like, 90s fantasy cover art. I just really enjoy the style. Um, but as I said, this is a Robin Hood retelling and I really like Robin Hood retellings. I have a few of them on my uh, TBR shelf but I haven't been getting around to them and I really want to because I know that 
a lot of times I do enjoy them. Um, so now I've gotten another one to add to that collection, which hopefully I will get to soon because I'm actually really excited about this one. And this one actually surprised me when it got to me because when I ordered it, I was expecting this to be like a three to 400 page mass market paperback. So I was assuming it would be relatively small. Um, and this is like a 600 page trade paperback. It's pretty like not the biggest book that I have, but you know, it's substantial. Um, and I was very surprised by that, but it just got me like way more excited about it because right now I'm like trying to like embrace the fact that I love long books. I think that sometimes I get swept up in reading a lot of short books because I know that I can get through them quickly and so then I have a larger number of books that I've read. Um, but I really genuinely love having really long books that I can just totally immerse myself in. Um, so when I got this one and realized it was a bit chunkier than I was expecting, I actually got really excited about it. And this I think should check off my uh, like nature vibes uh, criteria because it should be set in Sherwood Forest. So I'm really excited for that. Then I also picked up The Wild Wood by Charles DeLint. Um, and so this one is actually very small, but this follows a painter who goes to a cabin in the woods um, and then I think gets sucked into like fairy, the fairy world or fairy politics. Somehow she gets involved in things with fairies. Um, I'm not totally sure what happens in this, but it does seem like it is going to be very uh, magical and very like nature-y, so that's really why I picked it up. Also, Charles DeLint is one of the authors that he has a lot of different books, um, and this one I think this was originally published in like the 50s or something, um, so he has a lot of different books and a lot of them look like things that would be really interesting to me. They all seem like they're very like naturey kind of fantasy, um, but I've never read anything from him before. So this is where I decided to start, uh, but I really don't know that much about his books. So if you have read anything by Charles DeLint, um, let me know like where would be a good place to start. I mean, I probably will be starting here just because this is the one that I have now. But if you have any other opinions about like what are his best books, where's a good place to start, or if you have an idea of like which ones you think I would like the best of his, I'd love to hear about it because I said he has a lot of books and a lot of them seem really interesting. So I'm really hoping to like his books because then I would have a new author and so many new books to read. So that would be really exciting. Then the next book that I have is much more recent because it was published in 2015, which is Tree of Ages, which is the first book in the Tree of Ages series. Um, and this, I don't know that much about the plot other than that the main character has been living as a tree for the last like hundreds of years and then decides to turn back into human form and now has to figure out how to like live as a person again after having lived as a tree for hundreds of years. And that's pretty much all I really need to know about this, that like I'm 100% on board for tree people. Like yes, that sounds amazing. So I really want to get to this. I also can't tell, but I'm wondering if this might be a self-published book, um, which I don't read a lot of self-published books, but I would like to read more. So if this is, that would be really cool. I haven't heard anybody talk about this book, um, but it does have pretty good ratings, so we'll see. And then I have Once Upon an Enchanted Forest by various authors. This is an anthology of 10 short stories that all revolve around magical forests and witchcraft and they're all like romances. Um, and so I picked this one up for the first reason being that Juliet Marillier has a short story in this. Um, so of course I wanted to read that. And then it also just sounded like a collection that I might enjoy because I love magical forests. Um, so I actually have already read this. It's going to be in my December wrap up. I also have another anthology, which is very exciting, which is From Ashes to Magic, volume one, um, which is a supernatural beings anthology. And so this one is especially exciting because one of my friends has a short story in this anthology. So my friend Abby Paul, whose name is right there on the cover, uh, she has a short story in here, which actually let me tell you which is the one that she wrote. Uh, the Sulphur Knight is the one that my friend wrote. Uh, so I'm very excited that this is her first published 
short story. Um, so I'm very proud of her and I'm really excited to have this and to read her short story. Then I picked up Mem by Bethany C. Morrow. Um, so this is a like novella that is about memory. So this is more like speculative fiction, maybe science fiction-ish. Um, but in this world, people are able to remove, they've developed technology to remove memories from your mind. But what happens when they do that is that it creates kind of a duplicate of you that is walking around in the world, but just kind of on a loop reliving that memory that has been removed from your mind. I think that's how it works. And they're called mems. But in this, it turns out that there is one mem who starts to be able to create new memories, uh, which has never happened before. And so I just thought this sounded really interesting. I have been meaning to get this for a long time and I finally got around to it. Um, I've been wanting to read more books about memory just because I read one earlier this year that kind of dealt with memory as a theme and I thought it was really interesting and I just have been thinking maybe that's something that I would like in books so I wanted to get some more books about memory that kind of like talked about memory as a theme um, and how memory affects our identity or things like that. Anyways, that's why I wanted to get this. I'm really excited about it though. Also though this has a really cool cover because there's this like white cover that I don't know if you can tell that it's a little bit translucent and then underneath it is a vault which is just really cool and then the end pages are gold. This is a really cool looking um, book. Anyways, I'm excited for this one. And then the next two books are the ones that I got on book night for Hanukkah. So I mentioned in one of my other videos that my family does book night where we all go to Barnes and Noble together and go book shopping. Um, so I picked up two books. The first one is Strange Grace by Tessa Gratton. Um, so this is a YA fantasy that is about a village that has made a deal with the devil that when the slaughter moon rises they have to sacrifice a boy to this like evil forest and then one year the slaughter moon rises early and that kind of just throws everything off and sort of starts this whole chain of events um and i picked this up for a few reasons one is i have been kind of interested in this because it has like an evil forest that people have to sacrifice people to and that just sounds interesting and I love any forests whether they're evil or benevolent love a forest setting but I also wanted to get this because um, when we were book shopping I was still reading The Queens of Innis Lear by Tessa Grattan um, which is an adult standalone fantasy that she wrote um, and I was really enjoying it so I wanted to try something else by her so I decided to pick up Strange Grace and see what her YA fantasy is like. Um, so that's why I picked this one up. This is a lot shorter <laughs> than The Queens of Innis Lear um, and I'm gonna also assume that it might be a little bit of a quicker read because it is YA. Um, the Queens of Innis Lear was like very densely written so I'm wondering if this is going to be just like a little more accessible. Um, we'll see. I'm excited to read more from Tessa Grattan because I really liked the one book that I have read from her. And then the next book that I have is going to transition us into graphic novels because I picked up The Tea Dragon Festival by Katie O'Neill. So this goes with The Tea Dragon Society. Both of these books have been all over booktube lately because they're adorable. Um, so this I don't think is necessarily a sequel, it's more like a companion to the Tea Dragon Society um, and it is just a really adorable graphic novel. Look at those end papers, so cute. Um, and it's just about these little like tea dragons, look there's a little dragon right there, that have tea leaves on their horns and you can make tea out of them and they're just so cute. So this is just so adorable. And I really want to get to this very soon because I'm super excited about it. Then some other graphic novels that I also got recently were The Encyclopedia of Early Earth um, by Isabel Greenberg. And this I actually don't really remember what it's about, um, but I've heard good things about it. So I wanted to try it. I also picked up The Girl from the Other Side, which I've seen a couple of people talking about recently. And it's about this world where there are like, there are two worlds, the one where there are these um, beasts and then there is one that is humans and they cannot mix. But then there's this little girl who meets one of the beasts and the two of them kind of like go on this little adventure together. I've heard that it's really good um, and it looks 
like it might be a little bit creepy, a little bit sweet. Who knows? And then I also got a whole trilogy of graphic novels, which is the Witch Boy trilogy. So the first one is The Witch Boy, the second is The Hidden Witch, and the third is The Midwinter Witch. Um, and these I have already read and they are going to be in my December wrap-up. Um, and so it is the first one, The Witch Boy, is about this family of witches where all of the women in the family are witches and all of the men in the family are shapeshifters but we're following a boy from that family who does not want to be a shapeshifter he wants to be a witch but his family does not believe that he can be a witch um, because he is a boy and I really enjoyed this but I am going to talk about it more in my December wrap-up. And last up, I have a nonfiction and a poetry book. So the nonfiction book is Anamkara, A Book of Celtic Wisdom by John O'Donohue. Um, this is one that a lot of people have recommended to me. Um, and also, I have read other things by John O'Donohue that were more like his poetry. I don't think this is poetry. And then I also picked up a book of poetry, which was Great Goddesses, Life Lessons from Myths and Monsters by Nikita Gill. Um, and this is the Barnes and Noble edition. I think the original edition is like white and gold or white and silver, something like that. Um, but I liked these colors a lot. Anyway, so Nikita Gill is a poet that I like. I have read Wild Embers and Fierce Fairy Tales by her. Um, and this is her most recent book, which is kind of similar to the Fierce Fairy Tales where, so this is kind of retellings of goddess mythology. Um, but they're like feminist retellings of goddess mythology in poem form. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this. I actually also got a copy of this for my mom for Hanukkah because she also really likes Nikita Gill um, and she also likes uh, Circe by Madeline Miller so I felt like she would enjoy these retellings of goddess mythology. Anyways, I'm really looking forward to this one. So those are all of the books that I got in November and December. This is the end of my last book haul of the year, of the decade. I hope you all have a wonderful new year. Thank you all for watching and until next time, bye.